The dire wolf is an extinct canine. It's one of the most famous prehistoric carnivores in North America, along with its extinct competitor, Smilodon. The dire wolf lived in the Americas and Eastern Asia during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene epochs 125,000 to 9,500 years ago. The species was named in 1858, four years after the first specimen had been found. The largest collection of its fossils has been obtained from the Rancho Labrador Pits in Los Angeles. Direwolf remains have been found across a broad range of habitats including the plains, grasslands, and some forested mountain areas of North America, the arid savanna of South America, and the steppes of Eastern Asia. The sites range in elevation from sea level to 2,255 meters. Direwolf fossils have rarely been found north of 42 degrees latitude. This range restriction is thought to be due to temperature, prey, or habitat limitations imposed by proximity to the Laurentide and Cordilleran ice sheets that existed at the time. However, the 2020 discovery of dire wolf fossils in northeastern China indicates that dire wolves had crossed Beringia when it existed. The dire wolf was about the same size as the largest modern grey wolves, the Yukon wolf and the northwestern wolf. Two recognized species of these wolves weighed on average 60 and 68 kilograms respectively. Its skull and dentition matched those of Canis lupus, but its teeth were larger with greater shearing ability, and its bite force at the canine tooth was stronger than any known Canis species. These characteristics are thought to be adaptations for preying on late Pleistocene mega herbivores, and in North America its prey is known to have included western hoses, ground sloth, mastodons, ancient bison, and camels. In 2021, researchers sequenced the nuclear DNA from the cell nucleus taken from five dire wolf fossils dating from 13,000 to 50,000 years ago. The sequences indicate the dire wolf to be a highly divergent lineage, which last shared the most recent common ancestor with the wolf-like canines 5.7 million years ago. The study also measured numerous dire wolf and grey wolf skeletal samples that showed their morphologies to be highly similar, which had led to the theory that the dire wolf and grey wolf had a close evolutionary relationship. The morphological similarity between dire wolves and grey wolves was concluded to be due to convergent evolution. Members of the wolf-like canines are known to hybridize with each other, but the study could find no indication of genetic admixture from the five dire wolf samples with extinct North American grey wolves and coyotes nor their common ancestor. This finding indicates that the wolf and coyote lineages evolved in isolation from the dire wolf lineage. Technically speaking, the dire wolf was hypercarnivorous, which sounds a lot more frightening than it actually is. What this means is that the dire wolf's diet consisted of at least 70% meat. By this standard, most mammalian predators of the Cenozoic era, including the saber-toothed tiger, were hypercarnivores, and so are domestic modern-day dogs and cats. Secondarily, hypercarnivores are distinguished by their large, slicing canine teeth, which evolved to cut easily through the flesh of prey. The dire wolf was a formidable predator, measuring almost 5 feet from head to tail and weighing in the vicinity of 150 to 200 pounds, about 25% bigger than the biggest dog alive today, the American Mastiff, and 25% heavier than the largest grey wolves. Male dire wolves were about the same size as females, but some of them were equipped with larger and more menacing fangs. These presumably increased their attractiveness during mating season and improved their ability to kill their prey. The dire wolf's teeth did not only slice through the flesh of the average prehistoric horse of Pleistocene pachyderm. Paleontologists speculate that Canis dyrus may also have been a bone-crushing canid, extracting the maximum nutritional value from its meals by crushing its prey's bones and eating the marrow inside. As the genus Canis goes, the dire wolf was pretty big. Some may have weighed up to 200 pounds, though 100 to 150 pounds was normal. This predator had powerful bone-crushing jaws and teeth, used mostly for scavenging rather than hunting. The discovery of huge numbers of associated dire wolf fossils is evidence of pack behavior. Dire wolves had significantly smaller brains than grey wolves, which may explain how the latter helped drive it to extinction. Also, the dire wolf's legs were much shorter than those of modern wolves or large dogs, 
so it probably could not run much faster than a house cat. Finally, the dire wolf's predilection for scavenging rather than hunting would probably have put it at a disadvantage facing a hungry saber-toothed tiger. Despite its popular name, the saber-toothed tiger was only distantly related to modern tigers, lions and cheetahs. The Smilodon Fatalis dominated North and South America. Its notable weapons were its long, curved teeth. However, it did not attack prey head-on with them. It launched in low tree branches, pouncing suddenly and digging its enormous canines into its victim. Some paleontologists believe that the tiger also hunted in packs, though evidence is less compelling than for the dire wolf. As big cats go, Smilodon fatalis was relatively slow, stocky and thick-limbed, with biggest adults weighing 300 to 400 pounds but not as nimble as a comparably sized lion or tiger. Also as scary as its canines were, its bite was relatively weak, chomping too hard on prey might have broken one or both saber teeth, effectively dooming it to slow starvation. In normal circumstances, full-grown saber-toothed tigers wouldn't have come near comparably sized dire wolves. However, if these predators converged on the tar pits, the saber-tooth would have been at a disadvantage because it couldn't pounce from a tree branch. The wolf was at a disadvantage because it would rather feast on dead herbivores than hungry carnivores. The two animals would have circled each other, the dire wolf sweating with its paws, the saber-toothed tiger lunging with its teeth. If Smilodon fatalis roamed in packs, they likely were small and loosely associated whereas the dire wolf's pack instincts would have been much more robust. Sensing that a pack member was in trouble, three or four other wolves would have rushed to the scene and swarmed the saber-toothed tiger, inflicting deep wounds with their massive jaws. The tiger would have put up a good fight, but it would have been no match for a thousand pounds of canines. A crushing bite to Smilodon's neck would have ended the battle. During the Quaternary Extinction event around 12,700 years before present, 90 genera of mammals weighing over 44 kilograms 97 pounds became extinct. The extinction of the large carnivores and scavengers is thought to have been caused by the extinction of the mega herbivore prey upon which they depended. The cause of the extinction of the megafauna is debated, but has been attributed to the impact of climate change, competition with other species, including overexploitation by newly arrived human hunters, or a combination of both. One study proposes that several extinction models should be investigated because so little is known about the biogeography of the dire wolf and its potential competitors and prey, nor how all these species interacted and responded to the environmental changes that occurred at the time of extinction. Ancient DNA and radiocarbon data indicate that local genetic populations were replaced by others within the same species or by others within the same genus. Both the dire wolf and the Beringian wolf went extinct in North America, leaving only the less carnivorous and more gracile form of the wolf to thrive, which may have outcompeted the dire wolf. Grey wolves and coyotes may have survived due to their ability to hybridize with other canids, such as the domestic dog, to acquire traits that resist diseases brought by taxa arriving from Eurasia. Reproductive isolation may have prevented the dire wolf from acquiring these traits.